And welcome back to the latest anime news for the week ending September 18th, 2022. We've got some news for you all. Boy, do we. So, French publisher JBE Books has announced an upcoming special release of the first 102 volumes of the One Piece manga. Uh -huh. 103 even published now. But not in 102 separate volumes. Oh, no. One giant book. Oh, wow. The all-in-one edition, titled, of course, One Piece, uh -huh. <laughs> without the usual space in the name, um, will combine 1,035 chapters of the manga into a single 21,540-page volume. Huh. You know, just because you can do something, yeah, doesn't mean you should. Well, how do you? I mean, how do you read it? Yeah, yeah the one. You know, in fairness, like they said, this is not meant to be read. Yeah. Um, also, to be clear, they are making fifty of these. Oh, good. Five zero. Um, they're already sold out. Yes. <laughs> wow. Of course. Um, Despite the 1900 euro price tag. Oh, wow. <laughs> which, in fairness, for 100 volumes of manga, you, you know. Eh. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, this is described by its artist as, quote, I, okay, French artist, not to stereotype, but this is the quote. This is the materialization of an ecosystem saturated by media. Meant to be an object of uh, pure speculation. Oh, God. <laughs> That's the guy uh, punching yeah. the neck in the bar. Yeah, yeah. It, is, it is not to be read. Uh, is his black turtleneck sweater cutting off oxygen <laughs> to his beret? I mean, uh, oh, yeah. uh, when we hear that, are we supposed to yes, snap yeah, at the end of it? Because it's so it. cool. So beat. <laughs> Yeah, man, I hear you, man. I hear you. Cool. Groovy. I, I feel like that's like <laughs> I, I, I'm looking at this picture and I'm like, this this is a weapon. <laughs> yep. Of some sort. This is this is like this isn't you know, like I feel like there's some secret compartment and it's like out comes the katana or something. I, yeah. I know, but... <laughs> That'd be it's cooler. A, it's a smuggling device. It's just hollow inside. It's it's, it's Luffy's arm. <laughs> Luffy's arms are actually in there. <laughs> it's 31.5 inches long. Oh, my dang. <laughs> Which, I mean, I, just, I know it's not meant to be read, but it could be. Yeah. All I can envision <laughs> is, like, reading it in the round. So you're going to have to bend the spine yeah. and make both mm -hmm. covers, like, touch each other in a circle. <laughs> and then just kind of, like, crawl through each, each page <laughs> as you go around the whole whole bend. Yeah. jeez. Oh, um, I, I have another quote from the artist, if you'd like. Sure, why not? The One Piece book aims to, quote, shift the understanding of digital comics from a qualitative examination of the formal possibilities of digital comics to a quantitative reappraisal of comics as big data. Oh, I want to slap this guy. <laughs> oh. It must have taken weeks to come up with something so precious, absolutely. You know, he spent, he spent way more time on the press release. Yeah, than he right. did on the making of the thing. <laughs> Jean Jacques, what do, would you like to say about this amazing piece of art? I don't know, but let's do something crazy that no one will understand. <laughs> let's interpret it in wild and imaginative ways. Stop <laughs> taking the drugs. Yeah. <laughs> calm down. I, I mean, you know, absinthe is bad for you. Yes, yeah. you know, I, I mean, I didn't anyone tell him, no, you don't understand. There are otaku out there. They yeah. will try to read it. <laughs> Wait, here, here's the thing. I totally understand the idea of, right, let's make a, you know, ridiculous book out of all of One Piece so far. Yeah. That, totally get it. It's the pretentiousness of the release that right. just gets under my skin. Yeah. Uh I mean if, yeah, exactly. It'd be different if if someone said, "Hey, I did this thing to show you to to actually show <laughs> you One Piece as a manga, the whole 
freaking thing. Right. How Isn't this crazy? It is. yeah. Isn't this crazy? Yeah. And we're going to put it in the manga museum in Tokyo or wherever mm-hmm. it is. And here we go. Fun. Yep. This is not that. No. We, we we are not going to sit here and talk about the inner meaning of the universe because of based on this. And someone who is so poorly poorly desiccated in the mind for wanting to have an, an original thought that they put thought to put together all the episodes, all the manga of One Piece together and call it art. Mm. Now that that deserves that you deserve a back slap for that. Back of my hand. Well, I challenge you. Actually, give me a glove. I'll go over there and I'll challenge you. There we go. <laughs> Um, well, um, moving on from one um, big shonen series to another, one big data to another, so to speak. Um, <laughs> big, data. big data. So the new Bleach movie is a thing that's happening. Yes. Uh, the Bleach anime, rather. An advanced screening um, last weekend, voice actor Noriaki uh, Sugiyama revealed that the series cast list is so massive and stacked with such important talent it has literally affected the recording schedules for other anime series. I believe that. What? I believe uh, that. Sugiyama shared that in peak scheduling, there can be more than 80 different people <clears throat> recording for the show in a single day. Wow. And he heard that on days of the week when Bleach is being recorded, other productions are not able to get a hold of their cast. That's right. Yeah. Fellow cast members confirmed his story, saying that even when they've gone to other job sites... The staff there complained about it, including various production companies and even their own manager. Wow. Damn. Bleach is big. Yeah. Yes, it is. And this is why you look for talent that can do four or five voices at a shot. <laughs> that way there's only a handful of people that you have yeah. to interrupt the entirety of the yeah. industry. Oh. Yeah. It's it acts, I mean, it is legitimately kind of interesting because I mean, A, it means everyone's there, right? right. right including every single character. But also, it means like, um, like th- there's a lot of material. Like, yeah, they're, they're they're turning through a lot of characters, a lot of a lot of stuff in 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 this new Bleach. And also, it means that this is kind of like their version of the MCU, where all these voice actors mm-hmm. want are signing the contract to be mm-hmm. on this thing. Mm-hmm. You know, this is this is something that that apparently they want on their resume, and yeah. you know, I mean, this is like. And in fairness, like if Naruto, they announced, "Oh, we're gonna do a you know new Naruto involving every Naruto character ever." Like, oh. Yeah. Oh god. Yeah. <laughs> wow. It's the entire industry at this point. Yep. She's well good on them. I mean, that's yeah, yeah. Go big or go home. Absolutely true. Totally. Um. All right. Let us move on to anime announcements. There was a rather big one this week. Um, very much anticipated. Hoyaverse announced during the Genshin Impact 3.1 live stream this weekend it's working with anime studio UFO Table, UFO Table, however you pronounce it, for a quote long term collaboration project, end quote, for the wildly popular Genshin Impact. Um, nature has not been revealed yet, but the event showed a beautiful three minute animated concept video. Featuring some of Genshin's landscape and main characters. I was saying earlier, um, I think it's an OVA. I think it's a prequel, so it's not going to retell the story of the game. But here's the thing, everyone. If you think the Genshin cosplay has taken over conventions now... (laughs) Yeah. Oh, oh boy. (laughs) Just wait. Oh, man. Uh. Well, yeah. this is only the this is only the first shot fired, True. right? Once yeah. the game apps, you know, once the game wraps up in like ten years from now, yeah. then they will launch the mm. anime. Yeah, that is that is going to eclipse One Piece, Naruto, <laughs> and Bleach because well, it will be thousands of episodes. <laughs> so Ufo Table makes that makes Demon Slayer. They also make Fate. Let's do all oh, the fake anime. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Ooh, they're Here capable. We go. That's 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 you're exactly right. Like that's uh, what they're gonna do. Uh, mm-hmm. And it will become all the anime we talk about ten years from now. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Still be playing the game. Shows a week. Still watching the anime. <laughs> 
I leveled up Jan Fay up to 3,000. Yeah. <laughs> I still need 20 Primo Gens. Yeah. Um, uh, definitely, though, if, if, you, if you're all curious, give it a watch. It's gorgeous. It is like yeah. just fabulously beautiful. Um, moving on to other anime announcements, Bandai Namco announced a new apocalyptic third-person shooter game this week titled Sin Duality, um, and also revealed it'll get an accompanying television anime. Hmm. The game is set in the year 2222, when the remnants of humanity live in a dystopian underground city after a poisonous rain created a new breed of man-eating monsters. Boy, that's... Never heard of that before. Um, brand new concept. Completely brand new concept. Blowing my mind. Yeah. Um, will there be Becca? Oh, um, Pony Canyon announced this week that uh, Sai Akamoto's, I'm sorry, Okamoto's Mecha Ude project is getting a full-fledged anime series and a manga adaptation. Um, it is a mecha arm battle project, which began as a crowdfunding campaign back in 2016, and a pilot video was released in 2019. Um, a short TV animation uh, adaptation has been announced for Love Live, Nijigasaki's Nijion four-panel manga spinoff. Um, so it's premiere in January. Also, it's a narrated video version that runs on YouTube. And finally, for this week, a newly revealed mixed media project, Blue Hunter, The Ocean Currents of Midsummer Time, mm -hmm. seeks to raise awareness and encourage action to clean up the litter that pollutes the ocean. Okay. Um, it was created by the Manga, Anime, and Game Education Creation Center, an organization that aims to use pop culture to address, to address social issues. The project will, will include a webtoon manga, voice content discussing marine life, 3D printed figures, mm. art competitions, and live events. Nice. Yeah. Curious. Interesting. Who knows? Buy the manga, uh, but don't buy the one that's made of uh, paper because that's killing trees. Yeah, exactly. And don't buy the one that has, you know, uh, wax paper covers or plastic coatings on it because that kills sea life. So don't just buy the manga. Shh, you can't say that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Manga's all on recycled paper. Yes, right. so it's right. all good. No sea, sea life was hurt except for the sea life that's made. Actually, that's, I mean, <laughs> what? I mean, it, it would not be possible to create a non plastic release of an anime. Well, 3D printed figures are got to be made out of something. Yeah, that's true. I mean, so that's it's recycled plastic. Ultimately, it's, it's PLA. You eventually do something there. I don't know. I guess you could you could three different resin. Yep. So that could that could work. Yeah, I don't know. Human bones. There we go. Mm -hmm. Take the calcium from people, just like Star Trek. Suck them out of this little <laughs> thing and then make them into figures. Oh wow. Perfect. Inexhaustible supply. Perfect. Perfect. Um Japan is set. I should probably take that off. Um <laughs> uh, Japan is set to implement a new system for filing invoices. Starting in October of next year. Oh. But it's raising a lot of concern among people in creative industries who use pseudonyms. Under the new proposed system, invoices will only be verified if they're filed using individuals' real names, which will be accessible to the public through a national database. Okay. Uh -huh. This, of course, creates an issue for people who wish to keep their real names private, such as manga artists and VTubers. Um, yeah. Japan's Ministry of Finance so far has not considered any countermeasures for privacy related issues. Responding to they do not believe a person's real name is highly risky personal information. And the names are chosen over addresses or phone numbers as verification for this reason. So again, to be clear, what they're saying is you do not have to put in your address or your phone number, just your name. Hmm. Um, the database will also be open to commercial use, uh, reportedly to allow, um, for you know, verifying in batches and things like that. So you can you know run tools against them and so forth. Um, critics uh, argue the system prioritizes increased tax revenue, inconvenience for larger corporations over individual privacy, and express concern for the safety of anonymous creators with large audiences, like famous VTubers and MAGA artists who work under pen names. Interesting. I don't know where I fall on this. Yeah, yeah that's hard. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, yeah. huh. because on the one hand, you're like, okay, yes, this is important information to have. To be able to do proper taxation and proper benefits, actually, yeah, and yeah, you know, mm -hmm. things of that nature. But at the same time, you know, do you really want that? Um, mm -hmm. um, I'll bring up a case in point as as you were talking about this, um, putting a person's name, even though you don't have the address and stuff. Um, so Sandusky, 
the guy mm. from Penn State who was yeah right. Well, here in Baltimore, there's a sportscaster also by the name of Jerry Sandusky. And oh, he, right. and, he, and and he was getting hate mail and death threats mm-hmm. simply because that was his name, and people couldn't yeah. tell the difference that it was uh, the sportscaster mm-hmm. versus the the actual pedophile. Right, and mm-hmm. you know, so you know, I mean, that's kind of the extreme. Sure, yeah, yeah you right. know, but, but yeah. still, it's it's one of those things where it's just like, you know, I I actually happen to know how many Stephen Gearhart's there are there are in the state of Maryland ah. right now, and there, there's actually <laughs> two of us. Um, yeah. You've and, eliminated uh, the others and absorbed their power. <laughs> there can be only one. Um, but, you know, it's like one of those things where it's like, you, you know, do you really want to get that phone call? I really like uh, uh, volume number three of the, who are you? Mm-hmm. Why do people keep calling? You know, those kinds of things. Yeah. It's just, and, and there is a privacy issue for me for, as well. I mean, the whole point of a pen name and a pseudonym is to, give you the freedom to, to write things. Stephen King actually wrote under Bachman not to hide his identity, mm. but to see whether or not yeah. if he if it was his writing or if his name at a certain point in his career. Right. Yeah, I and, do that all and, the time. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, and so it's just kind of like, uh, I don't know. But then again, it's kind of like, well, yeah, it's kind of well, hard, hard to say. And I think the, the issue is like, I totally understand submitting your real name in tax records. Right. It's that then becomes a public on a, on a public database. Anyone can search. That's, yeah. mm, that's, that, that's tough. Like, yeah. I, you know, that, that, that becomes a difficulty. Well, the question I have to ask is why. Right. Yeah. Like, like if it's, if it's, a, if, if it's, it's protected information for the government. Mm. Okay. Yeah. For the tax purposes and benefits, whatever. Mm-hmm. Why does the public need to know that? Right. Yeah. Um, and I mean, it also depends on how public is public. Mm. Right. Yeah. If, if this means right. if this means anyone with access to the API, you know, anyone with access to the service yeah. can access it. Right. That's kind of different because, OK, but then anyone can kind of publish that. Anyway? I don't know. It, it, it gets it's real, sticky. Yeah. Real sticky real quick. Yeah. So it's a good example of the kind of thing we like to do here. We like to look at things and say it's complicated. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you don't have to say this is the right or the wrong way. Like it's complicated. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, there are obviously forces about- at play here that are uh, mm-hmm. not um, it revealed to us in this time and format. So it, it um, all goes back to Gendo Akari. So you know. yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> uh, meanwhile, over in Katakawa land, um, the chairman of Katakawa. Chukihiko Karakawa was arrested this week on suspicion of bribing a former member of the Tokyo 2020 Summer Olympics organizing committee. Yay! Oh! Hi! Um, oh, Karakawa okay. became an official supporter of the Games in April 2019 and published the official programs and results book, but a co- results books, but according to sources linked to an ongoing investigation, the company is suspected of paying money to a consultancy linked to a former member of the organizing committee. That, that amount is around 69 million yen, which is around half a million US dollars. That's a bribe. Said committee member, yep, absolutely. Was arrested last month on suspicion of accepting bribes from multiple companies to secure the sponsorship for the games. Um, the Japan Times reported that Mr. Katakawa claimed to reporters the money was a consultancy fee. Mm, they no always bribe. do. <laughs> I was going to say, isn't it always? Yeah. Um, I have this brand new kitchen in my in my mansion uh, for the for the being a representative of Congress because it was a, just a an understanding an agreement yeah. of, of friendliness. Oh, shut right. up! Yeah. <laughs> um, two former Kanakawa senior officials were also arrested last week as part of the investigation. Uh, the company itself announced in a press release to take the matter very seriously and will fully cooperate with the authorities, but will refrain from commenting on details while the investigation is ongoing. So all the standard, you know. Yeah. So, so here's right. something that, that that I find interesting, other mm-hmm. than the fact that this is all a bribery. I mean, the, I actually find this whole story fascinating, and I'm going to yeah. into this more. Um, but it just kind of shows you the difference in how legal systems work mm-hmm. in different mm-hmm. countries. Because here in America, no way, no, you don't get arrested for bribery. Mm-hmm. You're brought in. I mean, you can be. There's right. certainly no reason that that they can't. Mm-hmm. But usually that's not how it works. It's, you mm-hmm. know, you know, hey, we need your statement. You know, yeah. okay. Then, and then you mm-hmm. move forward. And then it gets to that point where there's like, oh, we got, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
clink, clink, mm-hmm. you know, that kind of a thing goes on. But even then, usually it's like, oh, you did a bad thing and you need rest to pay restitution. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, whatever. In Japan, they're just like, oh, you try to bribe somebody. And it's it's literally just bribing, a, a, a not just, but it's bribing a Olympic committee for, you know, benefit to yourself, obviously. Yeah. But, you know, they they got arrested. Like, you know, that's the system where it's just like, no, no, yeah. you don't do that. Uh uh-uh. uh, no, that's a, mm-hmm. that's not a thing. Whereas we would be like, going, what's going on? I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely right. It's it's that's shocking, but it's definitely very different from what we're used to. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, if they were the official sponsor, wasn't that good enough? Well, that, I think that's how they became the official sponsor, though. <laughs> yeah, but if, if you had a half a million dollars, why wouldn't you just go up and like Coca Cola? That's you know sponsor of olympic games forever mm, it's right. because they just dump millions of dollars mm, in and right. it's like okay is that a bribe when you go to the ioc and you're like here's 50 million dollars we want to sponsor mm. the games it's like you know what i mean the whole international olympic committee is like thank mm. you thank you mm. just break this money right on in here yeah why why couldn't katakawa just cut up in the same thing and be like okay here's a check for 500 million yen we'll be the sponsor you're good <laughs> like right yeah, presumably they, they couldn't do that. Apparently, but they didn't have the cash to do it, or they did. Well, no, they, they, clean. yeah, you know, um, presumably there there was more going on there than that. You know, mm. um, it wasn't just being a sponsor. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Um, it was eliminating the competition as well. <laughs> hey, wait, there was something I was thinking of um, where. We want you to go to Weekly Shonen Jump and break all their knees. Here's five hundred thousand. Yeah. Cool. Um, where somebody made something, they didn't. They they wanted to license it but couldn't. They went ahead and did it anyway, um, and they ended up getting um, uh, uh, like taken to court, and they ended up paying in um, damages. Roughly what they wanted to pay as a licensing fee. Like originally, they were like, you know, we will do this for five million dollars. No, okay, you know, later in court, here's a day, we'll give you five million dollars if you want. <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, mm. anyway, um, moving on to happier news the Ghibli Park staff oh. revealed new video footage this, footage this week of the park's Grand Ghibli Warehouse area which, along with its previously announced attractions, will feature sets recreating scenes from 13 different Ghibli films, such as the appearance of No Face from Spirited Away, because who doesn't want that, Mm. um, as seen on screen. Uh, The area also has sets recreating famous dining scenes from Ghibli films, as well as a display of materials from the release of Ghibli films around the world. And as no theme park will be complete without merch, a store will be offering original goods themed around the Ghibli works and a cafe where guests can taste, taste the Castella cake from the wind rises. Aww. The staff also announced this week the park will screen all 10 Ghibli Forest film anime shorts at the Cinema Orion Theater in the Grand Warehouse. These were the ones previously exclusive to the Ghibli Museum. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. So these are all now becoming available. Nice. nice. More places. So... Let's all get to Japan. Yes, please. Uh, I want to have a Totoro burger. <laughs> Wait, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, oh. oh, Totoro! I'm eating so Totoro. Tender. It's crying. It's just oh. like it's so good, but it's Totoro. Oh. <laughs> Lastly, Crunchyroll brought us because. Sorry. Uh, I, not the next thing on my mind was like, I'll have the Ponyo fish sandwich. Ah, oh, <laughs> come on. <laughs> Filet a Ponyo. Ah, <laughs> come on. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Lastly, Crunchyroll brought us a couple of announcements this week about upcoming events. First up, the record breaking One Piece film Red is coming to theaters in the US, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand in November. English dubbed and dubbed. Um, the film will premiere early at Crunchyroll Expo Australia and New York Comic Con in the first weekend of October. Um, they also announced the rest of the lineup for New York Comic Con, which will include a film Red casting crew panel. Panels with dub cast of My Hero Academia and Chainsaw Man, and an industry panel with anime exclusive news, which we'll surely be reporting on back here when the weekend's over. 
Uh, we will also have two booths on the show floor featuring installations like a special one-piece photo op, a Chainsaw Man art installation, My Hero Academia character monuments, and a replica of the Forger family's apartment. Oh. The spy family. Oh. Yeah. Oh. It's gonna Damn. have like it's gonna have like all the suit. Oh. Mm. <laughs> oh, I want to be there. I want to go there. Oh. Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Well, the good news is because we have the internet in these days. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. there will be extensive uh, fan-made film, and I'm sure, obviously, mm -hmm. official release of film of that apartment that we can all drool over. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, exactly. It, it's almost as if pandemic never ended. Remember that when we were getting all the mm -hmm. oh, since it's you know nobody can go anywhere. Here's the special digital room that we're going to put everything in. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah. Uh, you know what would be really great if they had the room and they actually had people dressed up as the Folger fa as yeah. family and then coming out and doing a thing. Mm -hmm. I mean I mean the photo ops are gonna be crazy for that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Room. I wonder um, if they'll auction off the oh apartment. <laughs> I don't know how. I mean, I don't. Yeah. No idea. I mean, they'll, they'll you probably, would... you know, they'll probably keep it for for further cons. I'm betting. Can you imagine that getting that and then having it in your apartment and have somebody walk in and just go, uh, wait. <laughs> "What's going on here? Did I just step back in time? What's going on? I don't understand." Yeah, and unfortunately, the putting the set pieces in the windows don't line up, so it's incredibly dark in your house now. I'll be like, Why don't you just cut new spaces for the windows? No, it's the original set for Spy Family. Don't touch it. <laughs> okay. October sixth through ninth. Nice is when that that is. So you know, anyone who wants to grab late tickets, run up and uh, experience the world of Spy Family. Oh. That's all the news for this week. Thanks for watching. See you next week.